I hope you all had lunch, but you're not sleepy. But anyways, not a million dollar, not a billion dollar, the trillion dollar question right now is institutional adoption of digital assets. We have been talking it for the last five, six, seven years. I remember the times when uh, you didn't used to see jackets in a crypto event. Uh, you used to see shorts, flip-flops, and if you talk about institution or regulations, uh, you will be bullied. But now we are at the gateway when the time has come. Yeah? So over the next 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I'll walk you through what does it exactly mean. When we talk about institutional adoption, what are the different aspects? Custody, infrastructure, uh, open financial services, and also give you a peek into an on-chain ecosystem. I think I couldn't have asked for a better previous presentation than Oliver's because he talks about regulations and are you really regulated? And I can tell you uh, in this presentation that I 100% agree. It's not easy. If you talk about regulations, it has taken us more than four years. And we have met some of the peers who have just done it in one or two months. Uh, so it's a long road ahead. But moving forward, just to give you a bit of highlight, uh, we, are we will be talking about two firms, on-chain custodian and on-chain digital. So a bit of highlights, what is on-chain custodian? What is on-chain ecosystem? Uh, the team comprises of Da Hongfei. I think he needs no introduction. He was here. He's founder of NEO, uh, Ontology, so on and so forth. Uh, our stakeholders include Sequoia Capital, DHVC, Posun, credible names. Partnerships as a custodian house includes IBM, HSM infrastructure, Insured by Lloyds of London through the broker Lockton. Uh, we have NCC Group as our audit partners. And then comes regulation. So when you talk about custody, you're talking about three different infrastructures. One is technological infrastructure. One is regulatory infrastructure. One is financial infrastructure. What do we mean? Technology infrastructure, and stay with me here because it's going to get a little bit complicated, but very valuable. So technological infrastructure basically means uh, building the ecosystem to encrypt your keys, building APIs on top of it, building whitelisting mechanism, user access management, so on and so forth. The regulatory infrastructure is what Oliver also touched upon, is basically your KYC onboarding, your transaction monitoring, your AML systems, uh, your travel rule, and so on and so forth. It's not easy. It all has to be integrated on your platform. And financial infrastructure means that you should be able to basically, on a click of a button, do your financial reporting, export all your transactions uh, to an Excel file based on address, sorted by asset types, and so on and so forth. So if you can do all that, you basically has a, have a platform that can enable institutional adoption by giving them safekeeping of their assets in a very regulated manner. Again, I'll use the term regulated very carefully, thanks to my last presentation. Uh, this is the leadership. Uh, myself, Chief Operating Officer. Uh, you can read this on the website, so I'll not talk too much about it. This has been our journey. So we are regulated here in Singapore, but it's not been an easy journey. As you can see, it has taken us more than four years, and that's where I agree with Oliver. How regulated are you? How much effort have you put in to be regulated? So this journey has taken us more than four years, from incorporation to funding to platform to integration, with regulatory tools, to IBM contracting, to awards, so on and so forth. That has been our journey so far. And when we talk about custody, these were the three pillars that we were trying to build it on. A, and uncompromisable, is security. B, transparency. What do we mean by that? You should be able to always check and see what assets are you holding, where are you holding, a platform where you can just log in and see that and see convenience. What is convenience? In order for you to check your assets, if you have to call 10 relationship managers, two private bankers, that is not convenience. So you should be easily able to log in and check it on your platform. Uh, so these three pillars were the pillars of our platform that we created. We call it Safe Platform, which is our own in-house technological proprietary. And this slide, I think if out of all the presentation you take away something, I would say it's this slide. It is the crux of everything. So what is on-chain custodian? What is on-chain digital? What is on-chain ecosystem? Yeah? 
So basically, on-chain custodian is a regulated custody house. It has built all the infrastructure we talked about, technological infrastructure, regulatory infrastructure, financial infrastructure. On top of that, it has built mechanisms like APIs for anybody to plug and use this in the backend. On top of that, it has built white listing mechanism, user access management. What does user access management mean? If you're a corporate and if you want to have different rights for different users in your corporation. For example, somebody can initiate a transaction, uh, but it needs to be approved by two other people, and somebody can withdraw, but somebody cannot withdraw. You can do it inside the platform in a very seamless mechanism. Different type of wallet services that on-chain custodian provides is warm wallets, cold wallets. Warm wallets uh, is in partnership with IBM HSM solution. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Cold Wallet is an air gap solution where it's a multi-six solution, two out of three, four out of five, where each different hardware device is stored in a different vault in different location. So that kind of security is there. But then the question is, why do you need a warm wallet? Cold Wallet is secure, but it's not very efficient. For every withdrawal, you have to literally take the physical device, plug it into your system, and then basically be able to conduct a transaction. Now imagine if you're an exchange or a payment gateway who does like thousands of transactions every minute. That will not be very efficient for you. So warm wallet is something where you can just use APIs to access your wallets, but the private keys will be encrypted by FIPS 140 by IBM and so on. So I'll keep it simple, on-chain custodian, a regulated platform, custodian, safekeeping of assets, so on and so forth. But how it all works when we talk about institutional adoption, we are not just talking about custody. Custody becomes the very base of what we call open finance services or transaction. So just to give an example, when you're holding 1,000, 10,000 bitcoins or any of the client's asset, a natural tendency that a client will have is, can you help me generate some yield on it? Or can you help me use this as a collateral to borrow? Or can you help me sell more or buy more? Or can you help me stake it? And so on and so forth. So the natural evolution or cycle of it uh, is completed through on-chain digital. So on-chain digital is an asset management firm, all in digital assets, crypto. Uh, it does lending and borrowing, it has structured products, OTCs, staking, what have you. Yeah? But I'll talk about on-chain digital a little later. We'll finish the on-chain custodian episode first. Uh, this is a look of our safe platform. Very simple, very intuitive. The whole idea is that it's no rocket science. Just like you log into your internet banking, you should be able to log in, check all your assets and their equivalent dollar value and so on. Uh, this is a bit of peek into our cold wallet solution. So when we talk about cold wallet, we have two solutions. Co-managed and full custody. Full custody means that we do the entire custody of hardware keys cold wallets, and co-managed means that uh, half of the keys are held by us and half by clients. It's like a nuclear bunker scenario where basically you co-sign and put the ledgers together to sign a transaction. So very safe. This is warm wallet. It also has a feature called HD wallet. HD wallet means that basically hierarchical deterministic wallet. In simple terms, within a warm wallet or within an account or a collective wallet, if you have, if you're, for example, a fund and you want to segregate all the funds of your clients, you can create as many sub wallets as you want, up to a million, 10 million, even more. So that infrastructure has also been created. Uh, also, we talked about HSM. So one thing is that we are HSM level four. Just to give you a bit of context, level five is military grade. Ordinary wallets are level two. So this is pretty much of custody. I'll not talk more about it. I think we all got a bit of background about it. But I want to touch a little bit about different aspect of institutional adoption, right? So we talk about institutional adoption. First part, safekeeping, custody. Second part, infrastructure. Third part, and final part, investing. How do you invest? What do you have around it? So I'll touch very briefly upon a few things. Firstly, asset management products. So these are simple interest accounts, but for digital assets, for crypto. You can literally put your Bitcoins, Ethereum, stablecoin, and earn interest on it based on how long you put it inside. 
This is a sample on how we basically roll out our asset management product under on-chain digital. Uh, yields are higher, but they are safe because we've all seen in the crypto winter and bear market that what all can happen. So we only take market neutral strategy, arbitrage, high frequency trading, so on and so forth. Uh, we try to avoid investing in DeFi uh, for obvious reasons that most of you folks will know. And these are more complex products. So this is more from traditional finance. These are structured products. So some of these structured products will be principle protected, some of them not. Uh, some of them, so different strokes for different folks, right? So I'll give you an example. So one of this can be European style shark fin project, uh, products or American style. So these are for range bound traders who anticipate in the next 30 days, 10 days, I expect Bitcoin price to be between this range. And if they are right, they earn a high yield, let's say 19 to 23%. Uh, if they are out of this bound, they earn a lower yield. So these are structured, customized, bespoke products uh, for sophisticated investors and so on. Uh, same, dual currency product for currency agnostic uh, investors who just care about yield, they don't care about underlying asset. So they don't care whether they get paid back in BTC or in USDT or any of the asset classes. As long as the yield is high, they're happy to take it. There's a product for that also. Uh, I'll not talk about all the products, but we have a booth here, K1. Visitors, happy to talk about all kinds of structured products, asset management products, uh, prime brokerage, and so on. But I just wanted to give you a bit of flavor of what we are building here and how we are enabling institutional adoption. Because when we talk about traditional finance clients, this is what they're looking for. Something more sophisticated, tailor-made, which is not there in the market. So together, this makes the entire on-chain ecosystem. On-chain custodian, a regulated custodian hound. On-chain digital, asset management firm, uh, prime brokerage firm, staking, and so on. Uh, and in between these two, there are some things that I didn't even talk about, which is financial reporting, events management, liquidity providing, escrow, OTC desk, ramp on, ramp off, so on and so forth. So as you can see, it's an end-to-end complete solution for digital adoption. It was not built overnight. It was not built in a week, a month. It took four or five years, and it's still building up because crypto is fast. Some of our partnerships, uh, we talked about IBM, Merkle Science. They also have a booth here. Uh, but it's, not, it, it's inclusive of, but not limited to these partners. Uh, so in finance, there is a saying, your network is your net worth. And over the last four or five years, we were happy to create a strong network of partners who enable us to do and provide all these services in a very seamless way. Also, thanks to our sister companies, our founder, and this ecosystem, we also have a huge team of uh, technological engineers which can help us enable and customize anything we want. So just to sum it up, we talked about custody, and I was reading a very interesting article. It said, custody is not what crypto wants but what crypto needs. And I strongly believe it is what crypto needs for institutional adoption, because we have reached a billion dollar mark in 2017. We have reached a trillion dollar mark in 2021. If you want to go above and beyond, institutional adoption is the only way. There's no other way. And I agree with Oliver, regulated institutional adoption is the only way. If you want to learn more about us, we are a local Singaporean company regulated here in Singapore. Come to our booth, K1, right there. We'll be happy to discuss more. We are very pro-partnership, pro-collaboration. We want to enable the fintech ecosystem, and we'll be happy to do it with you. Thank you very much.